So now we've been talking about how to manifest the power of God in our lives. Now, why is manifesting the power of God in our lives so important? Well, so that we can be effective and eradicate the sin, uh, the yokes and bonds in other people's lives, right? So as we meditate the word, we stay in the word, we serve God, issues that are in our lives melts away. It's called the yoke removing, the burden destroying anointing of God. It removes burdens and destroys yokes. Well, now we use that anointing as we go. We use it for others. So what's the most important thing to God? People. People. What's the most important thing to God? People. People. So when you're about God's business, you're about the people business. Others. Not yourself. Others. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm about others. I'm about others. I will love others. I will love others. Love is a decision. It's a choice that you make. Oh, I can't do it. No, you can. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Do you not think that God will empower you to help others? The problem is we're so focused on ourselves. What's most important to God? People, not money. Not money. We get off track chasing money when we should be chasing God. God should be our supplier, not our job, not investments, not your assets, God. So we've, we've gone over operating in the will of God. To manifest the power of God in your life, you must operate in the will of God, right? right. You can't do what you want to do, even if it sounds all godly. And unfortunately, the devil has tricked us so much with all this um, uh, biblical jargon. Make it sound real good. No, you're selfish, conceited, and about yourself. We got to knock that off. We got to knock it off. Amen. We must operate in the will of God. If you want to please God, you must operate in the will of God. You must operate in the will of God. He will not empower you to do something against his will. He can't back that. Amen? Amen? Okay, that was the first one. Next, we talked about we must receive God's vision and not our own. We must receive God's vision for our life and not go after what we want to do. Amen. I used to want to be a police officer. Well, no, let's back up. Let's go a little further than that. I used to want to be a clown. <laughs> you think You guys think being a clown is something you just kind of fall into. No, I was going after it. I was practicing. I had my foot on the chair. I'd be like, ah, bah. I do all kinds of stupid stuff. I want to be a tall man, you know, with the stilts. I said, I was going to talk to my mom like this. Like, mom. <laughs> I really did when I was a kid. I, that's exactly what I did. Uh, always clowning around, joking. I wanted to be a clown. I thought it was just so fun. You guys remember um, Barnum and Bailey's, right? Circus, remember that? He was at Long Beach, I think. He was at the Long Beach uh, Arena. Um, and then I think we went once to Circus Vargas. That was the stinkiest. Whoa. That was the stinkiest circus ever, boy. I'm like, man, I need to clean up in this place. But anyway, we love the circus. My mom took us to the circus. We went all the time. And I wanted to be a clown. Then I grew a little bit older. I said, hey, you know what? I think I want to be a police officer because I didn't like desk work. I don't like just sitting there at a desk. I need to be out. I need to be doing something, right? And uh, my mom's cousin and her brother are both in law enforcement. One was CHP. The other one was uh, San Francisco PDR uh, BART for the train, the subway. And that just really intrigued me. Um, uh, well, I, I went, I, I, I excel in everything that I do. And I'm not bragging, but I excel in everything I do, period. The physical agilities test that they had me do, uh, I think it was the Department of, it was City of Orange tested for them. And there's this six foot wall. And what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to climb it through the and then run, you know, climb over it, and then run around with her. I ran, put one foot on the wall, boom, hurdled it, boom, jumped down. Everybody was like, like looking like this guy's crazy. <laughs> I had, I had a, I was uh, after just after college, had a football build, and um, you got these little skinny guys, you know, they're, they have runners' bodies, and 
This is with the, the sheriffs. Um, did another physical agility. I'm running. I'm just do, 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 do the whole thing. She goes, I didn't think you were going to do that. She's like, you have kind of a big build. I thought you were going to wear yourself out. Nope. The testing. Got tier one on my testing. Oral interviews. I told them things about the city they didn't even know. They were like, I didn't even know that about our own city. Mm. I knew the square, the, the, the square miles of the city. How many officers were being, um, uh, were, were being hired and how many they needed? How many were already on and how many they needed? I knew when the retirements that were coming up. I knew the top three retirements, the dates. I did my homework. Yeah. But I had somebody praying against it. <laughs> <laughs> True story. She said, she, she was like, that's not the will of God for you. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. And no, I didn't seek God on that. That's something I wanted to do. It was what I wanted, right? So the vision for my life was mine, not God's. And even when God revealed the vision that he had for me, I was reluctant. I didn't want to do it. It wasn't until I stopped fighting, I stopped being lazy. I'm going to just be honest with you. I stopped being lazy. I said, you know what? Okay, Lord, I'll do it. We're off and running. So to manifest the power of God in your life, you must receive God's vision for your life and not be lured away by your own. You have to, okay? When you seek God's vision, stop looking about, stop thinking and looking for money. Money is not it. Stop chasing money. Money is not it. That's not even in the equation. God is so much bigger than that. The third, the third thing, manifest the power of God in our life. <clears throat> we must put all our hope and confidence in God and not in our own strength. Put all your hope and confidence in God and not your own strength, not your own contacts, uh, resources, uh, bank account. That does not come to consideration. You got to put your hope and your confidence and your trust in God. I'm saying things right now that should rock your world because I know where a lot of you are. And you're hearing me, but you're not listening. It's not in what you can do. It's not in your own strengths. It's not in your resources. That's the world's way. Do what you can. Use your strengths and abilities to make money and do what you need to do to survive. That's not God. Doing it God's way will have you thrive and not survive. Number four, I don't want to spend too much time on this. We must lean on God's grace. We must lean on God's grace. A lot of people really don't know what grace is. <laughs> grace, I'm going to put it real simple to you. You probably never heard it like this before unless you've come here. Grace gets rid of your excuses. Whatever excuse you have for not taking a step, Grace gets rid of those things. Grace, listen to this, grace will have you looking stupid when you're standing giving account to God. Because you have no excuses. Why didn't you do this? Oh, well, because of the... Uh, grace. Well, why didn't you do this? Oh, well, because uh, 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 my grace is sufficient. What's your excuse? You, have, you don't have one. There's no excuse. You see what I'm saying? Grace works best, the Bible says, in your weakness. Grace gets rid of your excuses. Thank God for grace. With grace, you can't fail. Did Peter walk on water? Absolutely he did. Did Peter walk on water? Yes. We all know that, right? 
you don't know that, read your word. Get your word. Get your word. Get your word. In fact, if you don't know that, the kids' assembly is right out the door. I'm serious. If you don't know Peter walking through water, then you need to go. You need some real. You, man, my goodness. You're far behind. So Peter walked on water, right? Jesus said, come. He jumped out, walked on water by faith, right? Well, he took his eyes off Jesus, looked at the waves, considered the storm, and he began to sink, right? So fear came in, right? We all know faith, fear is the opposite of faith, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's a, two sides of the same coin, right? Fear brings you what you don't want. Faith brings you what you do want. Just that simple. So fear came upon Peter. And he began to sink, the Bible says, right? Peter began to sink. Did he drown? No. No, grace. Grace. It's impossible for you to step out in faith <laughs> in God's will, <laughs> doing what God called you to do, his vision, Amen. with your hope and confidence in him, it's impossible for you to fail. It's impossible. It's impossible for you to fail. You can't fail. Carnal I put God at the test, actually. Um, we tried, from the world's point of view, to fail. We emptied our bank account. Her 401k emptied it and says, you know what? I did this myself. I don't want anything that I've done myself. So here on out, Lord, either I'm going to lose or I'm going to win. But it's going to be based on you. I'm going to give you my all. I'm going to give you my time. I'm going to give you everything, my strength. And we did it. We got rid of it all. We got our car repossessed. We got our uh, house foreclosed on. <sighs> Worst couple of years we've ever had. What did Kubo D say? How you like me now? <laughs> <laughs> the same day our house got foreclosed on, someone gave us their house. 3,600 square foot home. I don't need any more. Here you go. Well, glory to God. <laughs> Anybody give you a house? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You can't fail. I'm spending too much time on this. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You can't fail. Okay. Grace. All right. Number five. What we talked about last time was we must have God's wisdom. Now, making decisions. If you own a business, when you make decisions, those decisions can't be based on your wisdom. Those decisions can't be based on your understanding. They cannot. If those decisions are based on your wisdom and your understanding, then you're competing with the world. But God's called you to do something you can't do on your own. God has called you to, be, to do and be the impossible. Right? Right? You can't do that thinking like the world. Right. When the world goes right, you go left. Excuse me. When the world goes left, we go right. Yes. <laughs> Let me change that up. Got a, just got a little check. Y'all might be like, huh, what do you mean? You'll get it. We must have God's wisdom on every situation. Amen. You cannot lose. You cannot fail. Let God be your GPS. Amen. Well, I know how to get there. I think I should go this way. Well, the road's closed. That's what you didn't know. Yeah. What was that movie we saw at one, one year movie night? The Diner or the Mel's Diner? Diner? What is it called? Diner. The Accounter. The Mel's Diner. You guys didn't even get it. I said Mel's Diner. <laughs> you guys were like, no, oh, it wasn't Mel's Diner. <laughs> the Encounter, where the road was closed and it went off the, just went off and died. They wouldn't listen. They wouldn't obey. Stop using your own wisdom. And use God's wisdom. Amen. There is a way that seems right to a man, but come on, say it louder. Leads to death. The path leads to death. 
you guys got to know your word. Finish my sentences, guys. I'm not trying to call you out and embarrass you. I think you should know this. So there's a way that seems right to a man, but the path leads to death. Amen? So we got to get God's uh, wisdom on the matter. Okay. That brings us to this. And this is one of my favorite subjects. The blessing. The blessing is not something you say when someone sneezes. It's not, that's, it's not a response. Oh, bless you. No. The blessing I'm talking about is not a gift. Oh, he blessed me with a purse. Praise the Lord. Oh, he blessed me. He blessed me with some shoes. Praise God. No. The blessing I'm talking about is the empowerment of God. Every single one in here that has received Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior is blessed. What does that mean? That means you're empowered by God. You are empowered by God. To do what? To carry out the vision he's giving you. To carry out his will. Using his grace. Using his wisdom. You're blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. There you go. See, my mama hit the game. She caught it. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Go to Genesis chapter 1. What is the blessing? Genesis chapter 1. When I say you're blessed, I'm saying no one else can compete with you. You guys just sitting there. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go to this side over here. (laughs) When I say that you're blessed, it means no one can compete with you. Mm. I mean, are you getting that? Is your wood wet? What's going on? No one can stand before you. No one can compete with you. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what your job is. You're the best. If you're a secretary and you can't type, guess what? You can type 125 words a minute now. Grace. Got to lean on it. God's wisdom. Oh, I just file at work. Well, you can file like the Dickens. (laughs) File then. File your little heart out. You're a janitor. You can toilet is spotless. Whatever it may be. When you're blessed, no one can compete with you. But it takes faith in that blessing. It takes you putting your attention, hope, confidence in God regarding what he's called you to do. Where you are right now, you've been planted there. Change your attitude. Well, I don't like my boss. I don't like my supervisor. Because you have an ugly attitude. Change. Change. You change. You change. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. We're going to read New Living Translation. says, Then God said, Let us make human beings, man, in our image to be like us. They will reign. Everybody say reign. Reign. Say, I will reign. I will reign. I am reigning. I am reigning. Come on. Over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings, man, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed. Man. God blessed them. Saying. This is New Living Translation, but he blessed them saying, not blessed them and said. He blessed them saying. How do I bless someone? By speaking his word. I blessed, I blessed this person. How? By speaking. So God spoke. How do you guys know when God speaks, that's it? That's right. When God speaks, that's it. But in your mind, the reason why you can sit here quiet is because you think 
There is something that's in this world that can actually compete with God's word. You believe that. You're believing that there's something that exists that can actually compete with God's word. When God said, be fruitful, meaning always producing. Put that back up there. Bless them and said, be fruitful, meaning always producing. Multiply. You have the power to always increase. Replenish. You never run out. You have the power to replenish. Amen. Oh, we're running out of oil. We're running out of no, you no, we're not. Really? Think about it. Did God create us to die? No. Did God create us to die? No. No. He created us to live forever. So if we're to be fruitful, multiply, then and we're to live forever, then that means the resources here may get depleted. Oh, but he's also given us the power to replenish. Amen. Replenish. Amen? Amen? Now, I can go further. I can go further than this. Well, it mess you up a little bit. Let's see. Should I? Yeah. There you go. So check this out. Garden of Eden was a jump start. We're supposed to expand it all over this earth. And then what? And then what? Come on. Come on. Come on. Then what? Where do you go then? If we're supposed to live forever and no one dies, where are we supposed to go then? We're not supposed to just stay here. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh, what are you talking about, Pastor? What are you talking about? Think all those planets are for. Why do you think the universe is still expanding to this day? You can't stop God's word. Okay, I'm leave that alone. See, so you ain't ready for that yet. <laughs> Subdue, keeping all things in submission under your feet. Yeah. Have dominion to rule as lords. That's the blessing. <laughs> Bless you. No. <laughs> no. No. God is so much bigger than what what we made him out to be. Amen? Amen? Now, here are a few truths regarding the enemy. Satan has designed the world around us to steal our faith so that we do not depend on God, so that we do not become effective against the kingdom of darkness. Satan doesn't care that you're saved. He doesn't. He can care less. Especially today's Christians. Say, not me, though. Not me. Not Say, not me. Not me. He can care less. You love the Lord, and he still beats you upside your head. He don't care. He don't care if you're saved. What he cares about is you being effective. When you're able to mess up the kingdom that he's got running, now he doesn't like you. This is a kicker. When you are effective and you can turn his kingdom upside down, guess what? He can't touch you. Too late. Yeah. I'm already there. Yeah. Too late. You can't touch me, you slew foot demon. Amen? Yeah. You have to fight. First Lady Carmen spoke in that, right? right. Put up a fight. Yeah. You're going to have to fight. Yeah. Right. You're going to have to fight. Mm -hmm. You can't just lay down mm -hmm. and let the devil just treat you in any kind of way. Right. You have a say, saints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the way this world, you know, with how dark our world is today, there should be journalists following you around like, oh, my goodness. Look at this. Because that's the brighter you are. That's the brighter you are. Again, it doesn't matter what your profession is. Be the best at it. Play baseball. You should be the next Babe Ruth. I don't really know much about Babe Ruth. I just hear his name all the time. 
<laughs> right. I don't know about Barry Bonds. But. I mean, be the best. Be the best at whatever he calls you to be. You playing football. Mitchell, he's down at U of M. He's down at Hur Hur Hurricanes, right? Is it Hurricane? Hurricane. Hurricane Carter. No. Um, he's a he senior year? Is this senior? Senior year playing football. Be the best at it you can be. Was he starting linebacker or defensive end? The end. Starting defensive end. Come on. Be the best at it. <laughs> be the best at it. Satan has used this world to trick, train, and convince us that what we see and experience is just how things are, and it can't be changed. Satan has desensitized us to the trash, the garbage that's going around in this country and in this world. He's tricked, trained, and convinced us that this is the way it is, and there it is. Man. How many of you guys have kids or nieces or nephews, some, someone that you've, you've watched? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, okay. Did, 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 did those, those kids that you were entrusted to ever do something bad and you were just like, oh, well. <laughs> no. You do something about it, right? Yes. No. What's the problem is? What's the problem? All this stuff that we see that's out of line. God is telling you, I've given you the power to do something about it. You're blessed. Amen. I know why you're not doing anything about it, because you're so concerned about your own life. That's what it is. Ah, how did I miss that? You're so concerned with you, your pocket, your well-being, you have no time for anybody else. Hmm. Say, that's not, me. that's not me. We know that exists, but not in here, right? right. No, that's nobody in here. Right? right? Come on. That's not us. That's not us. <clears throat> the reason why he thinks, or he wants us to think, that it can't be changed is so that we don't attempt to use the blessing or the power of God that's upon us to stop his works. Again, is to keep us to be ineffective. You got to know that's what it is. There's many avenues. It can be guilt, shame, condemnation. It's all a trick, a ploy to get you to not realize who you are. To get you to realize or get you to think that you're not the righteousness of God. That you're not that history maker, that you're not the one that's being effective. Well, that's just not me. I'm just, it's not you? You're not made in the image of God? Were you born of a jackal? I mean, <laughs> man is made in the image of God. Well, that's just not me. Well, get it. Make it you. Rise up and fight. Because that's where we are, saints. Fight. Fight. The way the world's going, you can't just sit back. You got to fight. Amen. You got to inspire. You got to influence. You got to encourage. You got to love. You have to be able to care about the person next to you. Love on the person next to you. Amen. Where am I? What did I say? What's my name? I'm, here we go. It's because of sin that is in this world that sickness and disease and other darts come against the just and unjust alike. The Bible says it rains on the just and unjust alike. Right? right. My brother passed away. There's things on his part that he did not do, that he didn't take care of. But he's a righteous man. He is a just man. He is in heaven. Dancing on streets of gold. Experiencing what we only read about. 
it ranges on the just and unjust alike. So don't use that as a totem saying, oh, well, what was me? Oh, well, God doesn't love me. No. There's something that you're not doing. There's something that you need to tend to. Don't let the devil trick you anymore. I'm not trying to brag right now, but I'm giving y'all some good word right now. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm really, I'm saying. Somebody pat me on the back. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Glory to God. He gave this to me to give to you. Because there's a point, there's a purpose. Come on. Amen? Amen. I've been taught by the best. Satan wants us to accept the world and everything in it as it is and how he deals it out so that we not even try to be effective. The issues that you might be going through today, they're all, they're all uh, in common with one purpose, and that's to keep you ineffective, is to keep you on the sidelines. Know that. Whatever the issues that you're dealing with today is to keep you ineffective, to keep you busy, to keep you distracted. It's all a ploy to keep you ineffective from taking your place. Amen? Amen. Say, I won't fall for it. I won't fall for it. I'm moving forward. I'm moving forward. There you go. Come on. All right. Romans 12, 2. We all know it. The devil is trying his darnest to keep us off track, to keep us distracted. Whether it's Disneyland, whether it's alcohol, money, porn, movies, clubbing, whatever it is, whatever it is, he wants you distracted. He wants you distracted. Some of y'all clubbing last night. No, I'm just kidding. Here it is. That's okay. Hey, hey, hey. Everyone has issues. That's okay. But don't let that keep you on the sidelines. If you're addicted to smoking, puff your cigarette outside. I'm the righteous of God. And come inside and praise the Lord. We won't judge you. Now, we're after, we're after pleasing the Lord all the time. Well, we know you and your trifling self got a pass. That's okay. Just don't let that keep you from where you need to be. That's okay. We've gotten to a point where so many Christians turning nose down at people because of what they've been through or going through. That's all right come here. But know that when you come here, there's structure, there's rules that you need to discipline yourself to to get you out of where you've been. Right? right. You can't keep doing the same old thing and expect something different. And a lot of Christians believe want that. They think God is just so graceful and full of love that they don't have to do a single thing and everything will happen for them. <laughs> don't work that way. <laughs> That's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Amen? Okay. Do not be conformed to this world. Do we put that up there? Let's put that up there. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you say me. Me. Say I am you. I am you. So put your name here. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That I, put your name there, that Rodney, come on, say your name, that may prove. Who's going to prove? Yes, right. You will prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You will prove that. How? By your life. Not by the fake things you say. You say one thing, but the actuality is way different. You talk a good game. You can talk holy. Oh, yeah, Jesus, Lord, praise the Lord. Do, 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 do. And your life's a wreck. Oh, I'm so done with that. I'm so done with that. That's one thing is authenticity. I am authentic. That's why, that's why I don't play the fake game. I don't do all that. Oh, God bless you. No, because you're going to catch me on a real day. But like, that ain't him. No. <laughs> 
So I'm not, I can't be fake. <laughs> many of you guys, many of you guys already seen me in my realness. So we don't play that fake game here. We want to be authentically and radically saved. Authentically and radically slave. Not just like in church. Amen? Amen. Say, I'm authentically saved. I'm a work in progress, I'm a work in progress. But, I'm but I'm authentically saved. Amen. New Living Translation, let's look at that real quick. Do not copy the customs, the behavior and customs of this world. Shut the TV off. Stop watching on videos. TikTok this, what's the latest dance? What's the latest this, latest that? Shut it off. Why? Why? What's the point? Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you. Focus on that. Open your Bible. Try to reflect the word, not the world. Ooh, what's Drake's latest song? Is he still out? Is he? Oh, Drake. Whatever. And all these other people. People, I, there's, there's rappers getting killed and dying that I've never heard before. They say, oh, yeah, Nipsey was shot and killed. I said, Nipsey Russell, Nipsey Russell been dead. I said, what, what y'all talking about? Nipsey ain't in L.A. Yeah, what y'all talking about? I really didn't know. Some old Nipsey, Nipsey Huffs. Oh, no, no, praise God. Praise Nipsey. Who? Who? I'm, like, I'm laughing at these clown names. I'm like, that's a real dude. Nipsey Russell. Wasn't that, wasn't that the one in, in the easel down the road with uh, the Wiz? Yeah. With yeah. The, uh, we got to talk about some Nipsey Hussle. What? Get out of the world, y'all. Get out of the world. People arguing and fighting over some stupid stuff. Mm-hmm. This is stupid. This is a waste. Yeah, sure is. A waste. It's, Ugh. it's disgusting, actually. Mm-hmm. It's disgusting. So don't copy the customs and behavior of this world. But be transformed, or let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. So now the process here is this. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus, right? Spiritually, you're reborn, you're renewed. Now we got to get the soul. We got to get the mind right. The mind now has to be renewed, right? Our spirit is reborn. You're going to heaven. As God is my witness, you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you are going to heaven. It's not based on what you do. However, don't stay there. Renew your mind. Why? So that you can have a successful life. I'm no longer going to act like the world. I'm no longer going to go where the world goes. I'm not going to go clubbing. I'm not going to even go where he hasn't called me to go. You can go, hey, I'm going to go to this church. Did he tell you to? There might be a shooting at the church. Stop going wherever you think you want to go. <laughs> Get God's direction, please. So now, we, you can write this down, we do not have to buy what the world or the enemy is selling. You don't have to buy it. Amen. You don't have to take it. I know there's a soul part of us that has a craving for the things of old. I know that. That's true. You've done something in the world so much you have a craving for it. I know this. And that's not where the problem is. It's okay. That's okay. When you have a decision to go to this place, don't go. Just don't do it. When the Holy Spirit works on you, so my mom, she was a chain smoker. She used to smoke five cartons a day. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. She didn't smoke that much. But she, she used to smoke. Well, 
through listening to the Holy Spirit, she quit like that. She didn't throw on a nicotine patch or start chewing gum. I'm not saying you, that's not a step that you have. What I'm saying is the Holy Spirit is real. Give him place to work. Oh, my goodness, I ain't got even, mm, I got one minute left. The Holy Spirit is real. One, stop faking the Holy Spirit. Stop faking the Holy Spirit. Stop, oh, yeah, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Don't give, don't, don't try to give that trash credit to the Holy Spirit. That's not the Holy Spirit, that's you. It's you, right? So stop faking it. Stop faking the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit have room to work in your life. What do I mean by that? Go after it. Go after God. Go to Bible study. Know, uh, listen to me on this. Know this. Know, first, know yourself. Know that a time is coming where that craving is going to be there. You know, I had a hard work week. On Friday, I'm going to let loose. Well, how about this? Go to church on Sunday. Spend time in the Word on Monday and Tuesday. Go to Bible study on Wednesday. Give yourself a fighting check, a fighting chance, so that when Friday does come, you now have the power and the strength to be like, no, no, I'm okay, no. The, the next week, you might fail. That's okay. It's okay. I mean, what I'm saying is, give the Holy Spirit a fighting chance. Feed the Spirit within. Feed the Spirit within. You understand what I'm saying? I know I'm talking to multiple people here. If you think that I'm talking just to you, you're sadly wrong. You're mistaken. I know you. And I'm talking to multiple people in here. Multiple. If you're not doing anything, you're not serving. You're doing a bare minimum. Get up. Serve. Serve the Lord. Serve God. Serve him. Do more. What else can I do, Lord? I want to sell out to you. I know you know how to sell out to the world. Let's, let's, let's put that same, that same energy, that same energy you came, you came into the world with. Can we use that for God now, please? All that shucking and jiving you did in the world. I, I keep trying, to, trying, to, trying to get this girl, that girl, being a player. Oh, girl, you beautiful. How about putting some of that intuitive wisdom to work for God? Flirt to convert. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're talking about the blessing. You are powerful beings. God has created you in his own image. So you can't use the excuse, oh, it's not me. Oh, I'm uncomfortable. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Nope. Give the, give the Lord something to work with. You can do it. You can do it. Amen? Amen. Say, I can do, I can do all, things all things through Christ, through Christ which, strengthens me. which strengthens me. I will do, I will do all, things all things that God has called me to do. Through Christ, Through Christ, that strengthens me. I know what I'm saying. Shoot. I'm going to get me slipping. You can't do all things unless God gives you permission to do it. You're able to when he gives you permission to go and do it. Amen? Amen. We're out of time. You're born for a purpose. You are blessed. You are blessed. You are empowered by God to do. To do what? All those things that we just went over. All things, right? You're empowered to do that. We just need to train and teach you on how to do it, how to tap into the blessing, right? God loves you. We love you. And Jesus is Lord. Lord.